Hey guys and welcome back to Premium Beats Resolve Editing Crash Course. If you've forgotten since episode 1, my name is Lewis and in today's episode, we're looking at the edit page. Now because this is an editing course first and foremost, and as this is our main page, there is going to be a lot to cover, even at a basic level. So stick with us as we will be talking about the edit tools come episode 3, but today, let's get you familiar with the edit page, its functions, and how to place clips the correct way onto the timeline. To give you a quick reminder, this is a crash course, and as a result, we will be omitting some advanced features, such as placing a media clip onto the timeline via the Timeline Viewer's edit box. Although, to be quite honest, I've never found a use for this. However, it should be noted that the Premium Beat blog covers a lot of these core features, so be sure to do some revision by combing through the Resolve category archives. So this is the edit page. Let's go on a quick tour. And if you do change the layout and you want to return it to the default setting, you select Workspace Reset UI Layout. In the top left, we have our media pool. And remember, a panel can be extended whenever you see this icon. However, on the edit page, we can fully close the media pool by clicking the media pool button. So this is where all of our imported media will reside. And if we've set up bins, smart bins, favorites, and so on in the media page, then all of that will appear here too. If you decide to create a new bin or delete footage, then know that you don't have to return to the media page. You can do it all inside of the media pool. And as previously stated in episode one, you can also import footage from your desktop directly into the media pool. But if you did want to browse your drives and connected media, you would have to return to the media page. Here we can access the effects library where you can apply effects and text to your video. To the right, we then have a source viewer. This is where you will preview a clip before bringing it onto the timeline because you never really want to just drag a media clip from the media pool onto the timeline as that creates problems and will later eat up your time. To the right of that we have our preview or timeline viewer where of course we will watch back our edit. Above the preview viewer we have the inspector and this is essentially the Swiss army knife of the edit page. If you want to change the properties of a clip such as the size or position or perhaps lower the volume of an audio clip, adjust the properties of an effect and so on, this is the panel to do those things. Now, you can do all of that mentioned in other manners too. For example, we can adjust the volume of an audio clip in the timeline, but for precise adjustment, the inspector is your best bet. Underneath and not currently visible until I hit mixer is a mini audio mixer. And this is where you can monitor the tracks, not the clips, audio levels and adjust those properties. Then of course we have the timeline. This is where we will be editing and creating the next masterpiece. With the basic geography covered, let's create a timeline. Now you could, and could being the keyword, do that by taking a media clip and placing it directly onto an empty timeline. However, a more preferable way of doing so would be to right click in the media pool or press Ctrl N and select create a new timeline. This is really the correct way of creating a new timeline because you can choose the timeline properties such as the time code, how many tracks you want, the name and so on. However, you may notice that when opening the project settings, which you can do so by hitting the cog in the lower right corner, that unlike Premiere when creating a new sequence, you can't change the overall properties of the timeline, such as the frame rate. So if you're editing a video game stream which was captured at 60 frames per second, you would need to change the timeline FPS before importing the very first media clip. For the new timeline, I'm going to change the name to episode 2, and I'm going to insert two video tracks and two audio tracks and keep the audio at stereo. We've added tracks to the timeline, now we need to add video and audio. So let's reopen the media pool and head to our video bin. The way in which the media pool and the source viewer works is exactly the same as you would have learned in episode one. We can change the view options, we can turn live preview on, we can show the audio waveform and so on. To bring a clip into the source viewer, you simply double click on the selected clip. And then in the viewer, this is where we will preemptively prepare the clip for editing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be close to what we want in the timeline. So I've received a message to tell me that the section that the client wants to use from this clip is from 1453000 to 1453100, which is the timecode data of the clip. And I can see the timecode stamp in the top right corner of the viewer. And in the top left, we have the clip's length. I'm gonna find the first point and I'm gonna press mark in. And you can do that with the mark in button here or the keyboard shortcut, which is I. 
The keyboard shortcut is my preferred method as it's the same shortcut when marking specific sections of the timeline. We're then going to move forward 10 seconds. Here I will now mark out by either using the mark out button or pressing O on the keyboard. And then there are a variety of methods in which you can bring the media to the track. You can press the insert button, which is this one. You can press F9, which is the shortcut for insert. You can hold left click and drag the video onto the desired track. There are a variety of methods and essentially by creating an in and out point and then inserting it to another point on the timeline is what three point editing is. Now before we move on, if I just undo the process and attempt to drag the clip again, you may notice that when I hover above the source viewer, we have two icons appear, a celluloid film frame and an audio waveform. Now if you were just to click and drag one of these icons onto the timeline, we get just the one medium, video or the audio. So this is great if you're editing a music video and have onset sound from the onboard camera which is not needed. You can just bring the video footage onto the track without the audio. Now let's look at the three primary methods in which you can bring media from the source viewer onto the tracks. So I'm going to bring in another timeline which I've already populated with audio and video. I have a clip in the source viewer and I've created my in and out points and I've positioned the playhead in the timeline for where I want the new media to appear. And this time you'll see what happens when I insert a clip onto the timeline populated with other clips. They all move aside. Now even if we remove the auto select, which is a function we'll talk about next lesson, inserted clip will still push aside all of the media to the right. So it's not a destructive insertion, but it will dislodge your track or the timeline completely if auto select is activated. Next to insert, we have overwrite. And as you might have guessed from the name, this will overwrite whatever is currently on the track to the duration of the clip from the source viewer. Therefore, if I have a 15 second clip in a source viewer and the playhead is positioned on a track where the clip's total duration is 20 seconds, the clip will overwrite the first 15 seconds, leaving the final five seconds of the original clips on the track. The final edit to be performed from the source viewer is a replace edit. Now this is kind of similar to overwrite, but the edit is based on the position of the playhead in the viewer and the position of the playhead on the timeline. For example, if I want to fully replace this clip with what is in the source viewer, I would position the playhead where is needed in the viewer and then position the playhead at the start of the clip and hit replace. Useful for when you have a short clip and need the entire clip replaced. Finally, to round up this episode, we're going to look at the timeline view options because I'm sure everyone has a certain way they like to see the timeline. First, we have the zoom in and out function here. I love to use the alt and scroll wheel to zoom in and out as I find that's the fastest way to do so. You will only be able to zoom in and out of the playhead's position and not where the mouse is located. Shift Z or Shift Z will jump you out of whatever position you're in and fit the entire timeline into view. If you are a keyboard shortcut person, you can also zoom in and out using Control plus or Control minus. To the left, we then have our timeline view option box and here we can change how the media on the timeline is displayed. For the time being, we're going to skip the stacked timelines and subtitles box, but focus our attention on the audio waveforms button. This will turn the waveforms on and off. Underneath, we can choose how to display our clips. We can either have them display all the frames in a clip. So if you were to zoom right in, you would literally see every individual frame for that one clip. You can choose to display just the first and last frame, or we can have the timeline display minimized tracks. Underneath, we can then change the height of the tracks, but if you ever needed one track higher than the other for a precise task, you can increase the individual height by extending the track itself. So this was just a condensed overview for the edit page, and it feels like I've been talking forever. I imagine it would take a good few hours to run you through every aspect, but with what you've been taught here today, you should now know the layer bound of the page, how to use the source viewer, how to create a timeline, and the various methods on how you can place the clips on the timeline. In episode three, which is essentially part two of this video, we will look at trimming your clips using the various trim tools and more edit page properties. See you next lesson.